The essence of art that few people grasp is that art is not the painting on the wall or the score on the page. It is the experience of the observer or listener. It's what happens when someone encounters the work of art. That's art. And it's, it, it can't be bought and sold. It can't be packaged. It can't be codified or even measured. So ultimately, to me, the more important function of our job is in terms of measuring success, I suppose it's an assist to making the machine, making the organization stronger, so that when the alive, momentary, but extremely intense experience happens, that it be all the stronger, all the more telling and touching. When you look at something, you know what it looks like inside. Even though everybody's seeing a block of stone, you're seeing a statue. And you just have to go for it. I am nervous, but you know, once you make that first stroke with the chisel, it goes away. We're in a world surrounded by straight lines and angles. It's tremendously difficult to cut a curve. It's taken me close to, oh, three years to say that I've gotten a good curve. We do have customers here because a lot of the building is based upon donations. Sometimes it gets rough because it's very difficult to work with customers. The work we're working on now is 150, 160 feet up. It's true, who's going to see it? But it's not a question of who's going to see it or who's going to praise you. It's a question of pride in your own work and you being fully responsible for your work. It's one of those situations where the small part has to function with the overall picture. You never let the whole project fall behind you. You know it's there, but you do have to concentrate on making that part the best. It's like a computer chip. If the person producing the chips is not thinking about the function of the computer, which is based upon the chip, and puts out a faulty chip, then the computer is going to be messed up. And then somebody will say, that computer is no good, not realizing that the small part was the part that was not functioning. create something from nothing and then to have the capability of actually taking the software and telling the machine that you want to take a block of plastic and actually cut the part out then go to a machine and see the part being made it's kind of rewarding I guess you've got something to show for your effort I consider myself an artist I remember when we got our first telephone, and I can remember sitting there at the table looking at it and saying, you know, one of these days I want to work on telephones. And I finally got to. I got to do what I wanted to do. There's times where you got to do things that you don't like to do. And, you know, those jobs come along, but you just got to get them done because, you know, the next one might be something you're really going to enjoy and going to get something out of. Well, people's attitudes have changed. Their, their ways of working has changed. Well, at first, whenever the monopoly or whatever got broke up, people got real irritable and they were everybody's afraid of losing their job. But now, I don't think people think about that anymore. I guess it's in the back of everybody's mind, but you can't spend your time worrying about what might happen. All you can do is do the best you can do and pass it on.
you're not careful, you'll be swallowed by the magnificence of the building and not realize that it's people that are working in the building. That's the, the main thing that I like about the job is that it involves a, a lot of different people, involves a lot of different relationships. Talk to you a little bit about some tariffs that we found at the end of last week. They're aimed primarily at, at residents. It's uh, exciting to be able to make those relationships really work for the company. An so optional thing that you, you know, being sensitive you know, the to the needs of the corporation, you know, being sensitive to the needs of different departments in the corporation, being able to translate those needs into activities that would produce an, an end product, which is what we need as a corporation to make our business more profitable. Half the time to call interstate and half the time to call intrastate so they don't have to purchase two programs. Yeah, but it's a good filing, we think. And, yeah. Uh, you know, we look forward to hopefully to, a, to an early approval on that. We'll try when I go to work in the morning, I'm excited about going to work, uh, you know, about what the challenge, the individual challenge of the day is going to be. It's almost like a, a juggling act uh, to have enough intuition to know when to push or when to pull. It's just an added benefit or an added bonus to, to get paid for something that you enjoy doing. Leadership uh, in an orchestra is not tyrannical and didactic. And it, of course, looks that way. Conducted up there, they do what he says. It's really much more persuasive, much more politically subtle. It varies with each orchestra, the sorts of management skills that are needed. But the creation of a performance of a concert or an opera is extremely complex. Yeah, but what I would do would be rather than... The conductor's the only musician on stage who makes not a sound. And music is an art of sound. The conductor has a responsibility to be observant and point out errors, but at the same time to try and develop a situation where people are not trying to cover their tracks constantly. You don't really make them play, you make the situation such that they do. He does the build. The fascinating thing about orchestras is that we're all people and we're all full of the natural disagreements, prejudices, and, and little things that go on between people. The climbing for better position and the jealousies and envies and of course, everyone brings their own pocket full of concerns from without. But when sitting down together to make music, there is an instant shedding away of all of this. And the goal is greater than the sum of its parts. And the, the, the mind just leaves these things aside. And you can see people who really you know quite well hardly get along at all off stage make fine music together. It's a, it's a kind of a, a, a utopian. When you see a customer come in and look at your piece and they admire it so much, you know, they want to take a piece of you with them in a way, then you realize that that looks like a piece of art. Each person will do something different. Each one might be working with the same colors. Each piece comes out differently each time. You already know what you're doing. It's just that you have to feel your thread go through the bobbin, and you feel when it hits the end, and you know whether you should pull it tighter or not, or you know if it's too tight. It's all by feel already. So it takes a lot out of you physically and mentally because you're really concentrating on it. 
I think my favorite colors are the natural colors. The natural colors of the fleece. We talk about nights that we stay awake worrying about the business, nights that we stay awake worrying about the rug we're weaving. I guess it's just like any other job. When you have responsibilities, they follow you home a lot. It's not just a hobby shop anymore, it's a business. These satellites are about 23,000 miles up. You're not even going to see a satellite at 23,000 miles up unless you've got some real good eyes. <laughs> The Pacific antenna shoots to the what they call the 174 bird. That's its position in space, 174 degrees. The other antenna, which goes to London, shoots to the 307 bird. I don't know if there's a waiting list for this job, but I uh, I like it. I'm glad I'm. It's interesting. I like tech. I'm in love with technology. I like talking about it. But I'm not an expert, okay? I, I like it, and I try to learn as much as I can about it. You know, I mean, I, I can hold my own, but I'm, there's a lot more than I can learn about satellite technology. But I understand that only about 10% of this country's population enjoy their jobs, and I'm one of the 10%. I'm just glad to be in that 10% bracket. Well, I'm actually proud. This is when I come up to Light Guide. That was in 1979. That's when we decided we were going to produce uh, and then take it out of the lab. One of the challenges, jobs I ever had in my life, you know, to try to learn a new job. Well, I wasn't too old at that time. But you have to remember, we had right at a melting point. Uh, too much heat would blow it out. Not enough heat. She'll go flat. And we slowly start collapsing that tube down to a solid rod. And that's a solid glass rod with a pure silica core on the inside in which the fiber is drawn. People are proud of their job. So when you walk through that gate, you're part of this team. And you have a voice. 30 years I worked with the company before it was like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, you actually can have people to come down and address you. You've got a problem, and you can solve your problem. And uh, in fact, we have a lot of changes. In other words, that you're just trying to make your job better, where you can come in there and don't be frustrated. Like we really got this team together. Competition, we make their fiber. Sometimes I just say, well, AT and T is just letting them get a little head start on them up there with too much of the bull. <laughs> We're not afraid of tomorrow. Cause we were seen yesterday, and today is just a part of our everyday life. We're just doing a good job. It is like honey, uh, and it's sort of gooey like honey would be. But it is alive as a material. It's a wonderful material. It gives you more control, more sensitivity to use the tips of your fingers. It's coordinating all the movements of the two hands, and the glass, of course, has to, pipe has to constantly be turning to keep the piece on center. I, 
I believe in competition. The competition uh, inspires and motivates you know, to do bigger and better things. I think that elevates my standards and perhaps pushes me more. There are days when the expression is one with the glass, when uh, everything is working right, the glass is nice and it's flowing properly and I'm just very much in tune with the glass and that's marvelous when that happens. Other days it's a struggle. <laughs> the phone is ringing, people are asking me questions. You know, it's chaotic, and uh, I can't concentrate on what I'm doing, and, uh, and those can be, really, you know, battles instead of uh, poetry. And people have to work for a lot more than a paycheck. And I want people that work here to, uh, to be proud of what they do and proud of what I do and be able to, to get a sense of accomplishment out of what they've done and not just feel like they're coming in only because that's the only way they can survive. I want them to do it for themselves and for the job satisfaction.